I think the, the late motif of this podcast is inefficiencies, hunting for inefficiencies. I know some of you listening are probably going to disagree with some of this. I am cursed with um, a subscriber base who thinks like I do. So, you know, they're going to be argumentative and they're going to they're going to find something to counter. But I wonder. Is this a potential inefficiency that is downstream from, I don't know, fantasy sports? Wide receivers, the wide receiver market, they're making over $30 million a year now, and it doesn't appear as though there's a lot of proof of concept there. That paying a wide receiver big money results in your team getting dramatically better. And yet the money just keeps going up. And Vish Kumaran, who does great stuff on the 49ers, he floated to me that he thinks it's the fantasy football effect, that running backs have gotten less important, wide receivers have gotten more important, and as stupid as it sounds, that might have an impact on what teams do and who we consider to be a star, just the numbers, the eye-popping numbers. Is that a crazy theory, or would you argue and say, no, wide receivers are that valuable and the market is correctly reflecting that? No, um, I, I tend to agree with you guys. And secondly, uh, on the just big picture concept of fantasy football and that influence into the NFL, like you, you see it a lot. You see, you see it a lot. Um, and this, this is one of the things that where I think there could be this dissatisfaction with what the fans are seeing in the on-field product if scoring is down because fantasy football is a massive market and the NFL wants people to tune into games. They they said, you know, years ago, oh, we don't we don't like sports betting. Sports betting is evil. Like we don't, mm -hmm. you know, Roger Goodell's coming out and saying that. Uh, yet people that are betting on games are far more likely to watch the games. And so this is a large part of your viewership. And obviously, we now know that you know betting is legalized in many states, and so people are able to do it a little bit more frequently. And so viewership is setting you know breaking records all the time. A fantasy football brings a lot of viewers to the TV, and if their wide receivers and their quarterbacks aren't scoring anything and the game is becoming very boring because points per game are going down. Like that's not good for fantasy football. That's not good for viewership in general. People are going to be turning off their TV more frequently. So uh, this is why I think that the NFL wants to have scoring increase, but they can easily do it if they tweak some of the way that they're calling these defensive penalties and just incur the wrath as necessary. But as a topic for like 15 minutes ago, let's, <laughs> let's touch on the wide receivers and the tight ends. Um, with regard to the tight ends, you know, I, I actually did an analysis prior to last season when I was writing over at Fox Sports. So if you Google uh, NFL doesn't appreciate tight ends, you can find this analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up at Fox Sports. But at that point in time, so it's like one year ago, uh, so these numbers are slightly dated. The average top five wide receiver made about $27 million. You said it's about $30 million, So we're close. Uh, the average no. tight end at that time made $14.9 million. So almost half the top five tight end makes almost half what the top five wide receiver was bringing to the table. But the efficiency of tight ends, especially with the way that we're talking about how defenses are playing, the, what, the tight ends are more efficient than wide receivers. Defenses now yeah. are blitzing less. They're playing man coverage less. Um, they're in, so they're increasing the rate of no blitz zone coverage. And against that type of coverage, tight ends were averaging 55% success rate, whereas wide receivers 41%. Uh, tight ends were bringing in 74% uh, completion rate versus wide receivers at 68% completion rate. Um, tight ends were just more efficient on those types of targets. And then you look around the NFL at some of these teams. Um, you know, Travis Kelsey, I, I had a, a tweet out there Um Led the NFL in receiving yards since 2015, but he's 20th in receiver spending. Like his his earnings were 20th. Uh, 19 players earned that were receivers, whether tight ends or running backs. And obviously, there were no uh, sorry tight ends or or uh, yeah. wide receivers. He was the top tight end that was being paid, but. I believe it is a huge market inefficiency, even to this day, that tight ends are more efficient targets because of the way the defenses are being played, and they're going for a lot cheaper. And if you look around the NFL, as I was kind of alluding to, look at like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Mark Andrews. We're talking about three of the best teams in the NFL, the Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, Kansas City Chiefs. They all understand the value of a good tight end. They all understand, let's pay this tight end. I mean, when is when has Lamar Jackson actually had a, a really good wide receiving core? Like he has never had that. Uh Mark mm -hmm. Andrews is his best guy, and Andrews got hurt last season. Um, but and then you 
translate that out to the Philadelphia Eagles to some extent as well. Um, they've had tight ends getting large tight end contracts uh, and has really helped their efficiency. One of my biggest mantras as it relates to the NFL is I love it when teams do something different and do it well. Because on a one week to prepare, the opposing defense has to then adjust massively to you and the rules are already in your favor and you are implementing in that game something that you practice day in and day out and is different than what they do and or the, what they're used to facing and they have to all of a sudden make some adjustments to try to deal with it. And part of that relates to you know heavier personnel groupings. One of the reasons about Kyle Shanahan is my favorite play caller, play designer in the NFL. Like, I won't say anything negative about Andy Reid. I love Andy Reid. I think he's my favorite overall coach. But in terms of, you know, calling offense, I love Kyle Shanahan. And I love what he brings to the table. But both of these guys experiment with heavier tight end sets or, or, or bringing fullbacks onto the field, doing different things, unique things that opposing defenses are not accustomed to dealing with. Whereas you have your, you know, your, um, very benign offensive coordinators out there who just like trot out like Eric enemy was doing three wide receivers. You know, every mm. play looks kind of similar. There's no disguise. When you have the tight ends out there, there can be disguise. You can use play action and it works a little bit better. You can throw the ball out of the heavy sets on first down. And we know first down passing is very efficient. So, um, I do believe that wide receivers, you know, we, we see their salaries going up and I think that um, statistically, you see some of these guys and, you know, it's always talked about you need a great number one wide receiver. Uh, and, and I'm not going to argue like Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk aren't great at what they do. But we have seen the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Philly with uh, with uh, A.J. Brown has obviously made a difference there. But let's talk about the Ravens and the Chiefs, for example. Great teams have not had to spend a whole lot on wide receivers over the last several years. They have not had very good receiver production. They use heavier personnel groupings, and they're running through the NFL for the most part, you know, during the regular season. So uh, that is the style of offense that I gravitate towards more and I appreciate more and I think has the higher floor and the more overall efficiency is this creativity with heavier personnel groupings. And I think it does represent a market inefficiency where teams are using a lot of, you know, multiple wide receiver sets and trying to pay and overpay to bring one in the top, uh, you know, top number one. And we, we know this, but like spending in free agency is obviously a net negative. I mean, when, when you yeah. overpay, you have a, a one year bump, generally speaking, you will get that one year, but then Almost all of these guys, they end up hitting the cap for a lot more money their second season because they're normally signing to a couple year deal. And that second season, they're hitting the cap for a lot more. And their production, you know, I'm sure this is far more um, typical in basketball. But like if you look at football, one guy in one system, the way that he's producing, it's hard for coaches to like translate what what's he going to do in our system with our quarterback and how can we use him? And sometimes you're never getting the same level of production that you got before. So the guy has earned his production from what he's done in the past on a different team. You bring him here, you're paying him for what he could do in the future, but he's not able to reach that level uh, in this new environment. And that happens with wide receivers as well in free agency. Yeah, it's just, I mean, there is almost this game theoretical aspect to it where if nobody else is paying the tight end more than we don't have to, it almost seems like there's a conspiracy in the NFL against the tight end. But it's odd to just look at the top paid wide receivers that go down the list and think to yourself, would you have wanted most of these guys over Travis Kelsey the last five years? I mean, I just think it's not even... It's not even close. And that just, again, it just seems to be one of these things where it's done this way because it's been done this way. I obviously understand that there are game breaking wide receivers. I, I understand why Tyree kill gets paid a lot of money, but it doesn't seem like everybody in that top tier should be getting that kind of money relative to what the tight ends get it. Hey, maybe we're wrong. Maybe somebody who designs offenses could come in and explain how we're incorrect and the wide receiver is is this valuable but this is something that i consistently think about which is that there are conventional wisdoms in the nfl about what positions matter and what positions are less important 
And I just don't know what that's all based on. I don't know if that's actually grounded in reality or if it's we've been doing it this way because we've been doing it this way. I've brought up safety. Some of the greatest defenses I've seen have had an impact safety who haunts the quarterback. And safety just seems to be one of these positions that in the NFL draft, people don't say you need a safety. You must have a safety. Are there any positions out there that you look at and you go, yeah, that's an undervalued position. The league doesn't undervalue it enough or is tight end mostly the one that's the big market inefficiency? Well, there's a few. I, I also really think that centers are very valuable. Um, you know, that yeah. the, the, the uh, they are, mo- for the most part, helping adjust the protections for the quarterback and helping to prevent that and reduce that pressure. Uh, they are one of the few guys that touches the ball on every snap. Um, and I think like, that's why I'm fascinated to see, you know, the, the Eagles have a hand pick center to replace and Cam Jurgens to replace, uh, Jason Kelsey. But I'm really fascinated to see what happens with the tush push and with other things when Jason Kelsey's not out there for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, in 2024. So I think center is, is the first one that comes to mind, in my opinion.